Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa Sayyidi, if we have sinned too much and made too many mistakes, how or what is the best practice to help revive our dead heart? Yeah, the, the, uh, I think we have in Qasida Burda that the recitation of Qasida Burda that inshaAllah we receive the intercession and the bounty of Prophet to the extent of our bad deeds. That we're coming to this way knowing that we're in these areas, we're under all of this uh, difficulty and this is Allah's rahmah and mercy to dress upon the servant that ask istighfar, make your istighfar, give yourself in charity, live a life of service, have the, the, the etiquette and the adabs of recitation that have a tremendous amount of durood and salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad It's the whole practice. So it's a, it's a point in which never to give up and continuously do these practices and, and do these good characteristics and good deeds so that to gain Allah's favour, inshaAllah. A similar type question Sayyidi, As mm. As alaikum Sayyidi, in the process of cleaning our senses is there a zikr for every sense that can help us? Yeah, yeah, instead of going into these things again like that, remember we, we, we've given talks, so I don't know if these people are new, we've given the talks, it's not about you're going to do something and now lift yourself up and now open your ears, open your eyes. This is a, a talk in which to understand these are the gifts that Allah will dress upon the servant. But back to the basics of the tariqah is admit to yourself your nothingness. And if you're true to yourself of being nothing, you begin to meditate, contemplate, make the muraqaba, make the madad, make the connection, do the daily wazifa without break, without stop, that's, that's suffice the servant. They don't need extra when they're not doing the basic. And if they're doing the basic they have to make a very strong connection. So there's no, you know, do 10 more of this, do 10 more of that, that that's also a cultural thing. Everywhere they go they want to get different wazifas and get more wazifas and recite more things. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Because the thought is like you're climbing and I, I'm gonna go now 10 feet higher if I do this, I'm gonna go 10 feet higher and do this and we attribute too much to ourselves. We only know the reality that uh, no, it's, it's not based on ourself at all. So it's not about how much I'm going to carry, how many wazifas I'm going to recite, I'm going to impress the heavens because I can do this you know 10,000 times, 100,000 times. But it's first mastering the connection that I'm nothing, make the connection keep making the connection, negating oneself, fighting against oneself that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. That's the, the struggle. Then when they made that connection, that connection is so strong the shaykhs will inspire within your heart, now recite this, now recite that, now breathe like this, do like that. So we're not there, we're getting people to understand the bounty, make the connection. But the certain cultures they don't understand the connection and they understood that when you see a shaykh get a wazifa. So they go to every event and say, give me something to recite, give me more of this to recite because you're putting too much importance on yourself. 
and it's as if you, you have 20 of these wazifas from all the people you've met and none of them have been done. And it's not the importance, the importance is make the connection. Because once you enter into their realm if you can make that connection that's where the power is, that's where the reflection of energies are coming and the fight in negating yourself, negating ourselves. Because what dunya want now is make yourself into something, identify yourself, let people to know who you are. We said even a little kid in the middle of a, a village in some place far away that nobody has ever heard, he's inspired to go live. Why? So that he can be a seed and never reach the light and never reach the wave. As much as the seed wants to present itself as much as it will always remain a seed. When the seed is unknown and then put into the soil and isolates itself like what we described tonight, it begins to understand that, you know, I probably have a much bigger purpose than what I've been doing in the, in the physical world. It begin to isolate, the dirt becomes isolation. The perfect soil is the ishq and love of Prophet that they have that love, they feel themselves a Ruza Sharif, they isolate often, they feel that they're in the, in the presence of Prophet negating and being nothing. Only then that seed can begin to dissipate and disintegrate. So this is again standard, keep, keep saying that. So that, that carries through in everything. When we truly understand that then our life is about turning it off. So last night we said on and off binary code, the moon represents off, the sun represents on. So in the heavens Allah shows us binary code. The sun is in a station of on, it's eternal and it continuously illuminating. The moon is the nukht, nothing. It has no light of its own. It's not like the earth with flashy lights and all these life and all these things that are happening on the earth because the earth represents humanity and their dunya desire. And the moon doesn't even pretend to be the sun and make a false light and a fake light, nothing, nothing. Had a lot of difficulties, that's why you see all the craters, had a lot of testing, a lot of pounding but it always follows. And it stays the entire course and it's so, it's so istiqam, it's so firm on its course that you can look to it and know where you are, you can look to it and know what day it is. So it plays an important role in guidance because of its staying firm and true to its course as a result of following that which is eternal, it reflects light to humanity. So when we're on earth and we're looking up, Allah wants us to understand, you know, you're actually breathing on that planet because that moon stays its course because it sends the light and the reflection of the sun upon earth and farmer's almanac and anyone who does farming would understand it's actually moonlight that grows vegetation, not sunlight, sunlight only ripens. So we are… we're in need of the earth, the sun and the moon. So then Allah is saying that you need it and even your soul needs it as an understanding of guidance. So qamarun are the awliya that they took to that understanding and then they train people in the same way, be a moon. Try not to be the earth with too many lights and too many distractions in your life, you're not going to get anywhere. And in the end it's going to be difficult. If you can take the way of the moon then your firmness is always follow the light, seek the knowledges of the light, not the knowledges of earth. Who cares about all of the discoveries of this earth, what you're going to do with it in akhirah, right? So even the usul that have a fixation on, on physical properties, learn it but that which is eternal is far more superior in the jurisprudence, right? 
study how to make wudu, how many videos people want to make about wudu. But that's physical body, once you learn that now make a video on the how to make the wudu of your soul and then your heart and your blood because that's eternal, right? How do you wash your blood from shaitan is inside your blood? How do you wash your heart and the wudu of your heart? That knowledge is eternal. If you understood that knowledge, that knowledge is your eternity. Washing your physical, what are you going to do in the heavens with that? There was this cup, this cup or this bigger cup, what are you going to take into paradise? You don't have that body anymore. So it means it has its place and the scholars of, of physical they have their place to give us basics ABCs. But the knowledges of reality then they're completely different because they're eternal and that, that has a far greater weight and reality inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, what is the reality of the half of the moon that never faces the earth? The dark side of the moon. Yeah, this is the reality of the moon we talked about that the, the moons and 12 moons, the 12 khalifas and the 12 imams of the nation because the moon represents guidance, the qamarun and these are the representations of those whom follow the reality of the eternal light. And in this example of sunlight is the reality of Prophet that the eternal soul and the importance of the eternal soul that is always shining upon this creation. And the moons that represent and follow that reality and that the holy companions and their placement and the representation of the face, the face of the moon, the first moon of this nation is Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq He represents the face that would be facing Prophet and reflecting and guiding towards humanity. And then the first of the Imams and 12 Imams because of the 12 stations and the 12 moons is Imam Ali And this is all Ahlul Sunnah, the 12 Imams their names are all over Medina. And these were all Sunni belief just because one particular country decided to like it more than others doesn't make it theirs. We said before Pakistanis love Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani but unfortunately for them he's actually from Iran, from Jilan. So it doesn't matter how much you love somebody doesn't make them yours. So we see the same, the Imams they're Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah now other people love them, congratulations that's great. But this is a, the, in the tradition, this is the reality of Prophet and described that from my nation, from my family there would be 12 that will guide this nation, the first of whom is Imam Ali Salam and the last of whom is Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. And then the face of the moon that is always guiding the earth then these are the external khalifas and the first of which is Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. So then the importance of the first moon is with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq's face guiding humanity and that the reality of Sayyidina Imam Ali as salam is then the dark side of the moon in which the humanity doesn't know its secret but its secret is there. And that represented on the hijrah when Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq went with Sayyidina Muhammad to establish the nation but that event its key was Imam Ali salam stayed in the bed to sacrifice himself for that event to take place. They were coming and trying to harm Prophet and Imam Ali salam said, I will sit in your bed, let them come to kill me and you escape with your beloved friend to establish the nation and the way of Islam. That became the opening of our calendar. So the, the moon which is a, is a reference into time and guidance is based on these two holy characters, one that accompanied Prophet and one whom service was as dear and laid to be sacrificed in the bed for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad 
So these ashiqeen everything they did was for the love of Prophet So this is a immense realities, immense realities. So that's why the, this station of love is so important. We love all the holy companions, all the Ahlul Bayt because you want to be a full moon complete with both sides. If you're just a half moon you're missing something and you're missing tremendous secrets and realities. And that's why love is complete, love has no limit. The heart is infinite in capacity, why, why not to love all, all whom Allah loves when the heart has infinite capacity, it doesn't cost anyone anything. But it's the stinginess of bad character and, and shaitan that plays with people. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the deep reality of the miracle of Prophet in splitting the moon? Does it confirm the authority of Prophet over all creation and awliyaullah? Please forgive if it's a wrong question. Yeah, we've talked, we've talked about that in, in, in previous talks that Prophet has authority over vast, the all, all, all dominion over everything. But that was a, a sign in which he split the moon and brought it back together. And that was a sign that the nation was split into two firqas, one that follow themselves and Sunni and the other one Humar Nashari that are Shia. And that he brought it back right after opening it brought it back that in the end these nations and these two tribes would come together. That the nation would be unified under Sayyidina Mahdi salam, not before. So that, that was the re reality that they would adhere to the imams and they would separate and they would call the imams as, as their way and the others would say, no we follow the external khalifas and that would be our way. And they made themselves to be in two different parties in Islam basically the two, two great differences are on the Sunni and Shia understandings. But Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam then is the time in which Prophet brought it right back that Imam Mahdi Salaam would come to bring the nation to be whole because they need an Imam and when the Imam comes then they follow, they don't follow they cease to exist. So this is a, is a great sign from Prophet because Allah granted in this month of Qamar ikhtarab as saat The moon is now given reference to, pay attention to the time ikhtarab as saat that Allah gave to us that in Surah Qamar, so now the moon has to do with the last days, that look to the signs of the moon and that it split. And that the qiyamah and difficulties are coming as a result of looking for that, that clock. So what happened now? They look and literally there's a sa'at at hajj, there's a clock. So that was a sign from Allah's signs that now we're into the last days of this earth. When a big clock appears on hajj like the Uncle Ben tower in, in the UK. Allah gave iqtara basaat, look for the clock. And then people want to make uh, you know difficult tafsirs but it literally look to the clock and now all you see is a clock on hajj. So that was a sign that this now when that appears something of difficulties is opening onto the earth and that the qamar will inshaAllah be coming together and that Sayyidina Mahdi salam inshaAllah to be present soon. They're now found their Messiah. As a result of their finding their Messiah then they must begin to have a, a battle in Jerusalem that they will start. So means then if uh, that type of battle begins the whole world will be upside down. So as a result of what they say, because not our saying we didn't find any Messiah, they say their Messiah has come as a result he must declare himself and request his temple to be built. Unfortunately there's an entire Muslim community there. <laughs> so as a result he is going to try to 
vacate the area. If those events happen within the next few months opening or whenever he, he's already proclaimed himself, whenever he redeems himself as, as the character and the title that he's claiming, then means immense wars will be broken out and will globally affect the whole world. That's why I keep everybody to have reserves, have cash at home, some gold at home, some food at home, water and supplies at home and to keep yourself to be a person of faith with the belief that days of difficulty are upon us. Not by me saying, so nobody can say, oh Shaykh is not calling these things, no, absolutely not. We are the watchers, that we watch the signs, the Rabbisat. As soon as you see somebody coming and a whole nation is saying, our Messiah is here, hello this is a big sign but nobody's talking about it. But for our community then prepare yourselves, make sure you have food at home, make sure you have supplies at home and that you're not caught in a condition of difficulty, inshaAllah, Allah guide and protect us inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Please excuse me for my ignorance, how can we be off when in life certain experiences and emotions such as anger are constantly putting us in a state of anxiety? Well you have to find out why you have anxiety, those are other talks, right? So you'll, you'll take the just of what we're saying, I have to learn to be off, I have to learn to be off. Then there are other talks that describe depression and anxiety. Depression is the future, anxiety is the past. So these things have to be cut or the reverse, you're depressed about the past, all the past actions that were done that you have regret, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, that makes people to be depressed. And then the future they're anxious, they're worried, how am I going to do, how am I going to do this, how am I going to get through that? So then these are the two difficulties that shaitan puts upon everybody. But this is a different talk than being off, you don't, you can't mix everything together and say, what's the soup here? So these are all different steps within the tariqah. One, is the past is the past, what are you depressed about? I lost everything, who cares? You're not really crying, you're not going to bring a bag. The past is uh, finished. When you make your peace with the past, do your zikr, ask Allah, take it from your heart, take it from your heart, don't forget it because you, you never can forget it, you forgive it and take it out of the heart, you do your work on that so that not to be depressed about the past. An anxiety for the future, then build your faith, build your connection and your light. Anxiety is that because maybe you don't feel where you're supposed to be and worry about the soul more than what your rizq and your dunya is going to be. You should be anxious about the grave and the condition of your soul, make sure your connection is strong, your love for Allah is strong, your love for Prophet is strong and that your akhirah has your precedence and, and is more important to you. As a result of your spiritual practices the anxiety diminishes because you feel the content and the closeness to the Divine, you feel the connection with these awliya, you feel the love for Sayyidina Muhammad most important. Then as a result less and less anxious, less and less anxious. Those are different states and there's a continuous battle. So that's a different struggle. Now to be off is a state of being in which I don't need to put my opinion into everything. You know if everybody's going to give an opinion and I'm going to go to this event and then they're, they're just going to keep talking, I don't need to talk. There's certain places you go and, and, and people excite you and get you to be upset and, and again you lose it. Then you train yourself not to, so that's a whole training mechanism of trying to continuously talk, talk too much, jabbering and, and, and things that are not necessary. And you put a rock in your mouth, a lollipop in your mouth so that to train yourself not to talk. These are completely different uh, experiences inshaAllah.
We have a question from the Help Me, from a new uh, Hi, Sheikh. Uh, Hi. Do you, do you know much about near-death experiences or hypnotherapy, past life regression, or mediums and people who talk to God? How can the spiritual science that teaches reincarnation and evolution of the soul and oneness with God correspond with Sufism or Islam? the real deen, and also a real reality. Is there a hell as a punishment? Yeah, you're mixing too many things. So it's like coming to a restaurant and, and asking for jambalaya and, and kebab and, and, and brioni all in one dish. So you just don't, don't mix your dishes. That Islam is pure, Sufism has its entire science. Whatever you think you know from these other people, negate it and take your mind off of it. And Islam has its depth of reality, there's no recycling and that's a whole different reality. So you have to sort of what you know of your experiences, you say, okay now that I'm led to this way of gold and this reality of, of tariqahs, the reality of Islam then that is by itself, I don't mix it with anything and I don't compare it to anything. It has the most advanced reality towards that uh, understanding and to achieve that reality then is important. But if you start to mix it with this and that you're going to take the impurity of the gold down. So I have a copper ring, I have a silver ring, I have a, a, a zinc ring. And then all of a sudden you get a big gold gift from, from Allah and say, I'm going to burn them all down and put it together. Well you destroyed the gold. The zinc is okay because it loves to have gold. So all the lower understandings they would love to have Islamic knowledge incorporated upon them. But you destroyed the Islamic knowledge of it. So that's why we don't mix all of these things, they're half truths or no truths. So they have a little bit of understanding and they mix a whole bunch of nonsense in the process. So it's better to just say, oh what I experienced I experienced but now let me come to this reality as an empty cup and that the shaykhs begin to teach and that's why if you go through the videos you'll see it. The reality of light and what's eternity, there's no reincarnation. There's nothing Allah has to recycle, it's not like a newspaper you put outside and they have to take it back and then give you another one because they don't want those. Recycling is a, is a, is a, is crookery, it's a bunch of thieves. They, they don't want to pay for their products and the materials. So they convinced you, give me all your materials for free so that we can remake a product and sell it back to you. So the material cost came to nothing. And they came back and sold you the same thing. Well, Allah doesn't have to re recondition things and send them back to people, everything comes new. But if you reach a state of light then that has a completely different reality that you're not bound by space and time. So then there's an eternal horizon in which they can move on that horizon of eternity. So those are completely different realities and immense, immense. That's why the seeker makes their connection and, and basically voids everything else they thought they knew and enter into this reality so that their cup is empty and can be poured all of these uh, realities into them. And uh, hell, uh, definite, definite hundred percent hell. If uh, anyone wants to know what hell is on earth is go to a hospital. It's a place of healing but if you enter an emergency room all you hear is screaming. So before you can get well if you've been injured or hurt there's going to be some screaming. And that is a process of healing within itself. So depending upon the condition that people put themselves on and put themselves in, well they have to be clean before they can go to the higher floors. That's a problem. So it's a based on what people did to themselves, to their soul, to their physicality. What they did to others, these have to be clean, these have to be rectified and purified. That process 
then is going to be difficult. So the example of hell on earth are emergency rooms at a hospital. It's a source of healing but there's sure a lot of screaming in there. So we pray that Allah give us the means in which to clean on this earth in our wakened state. Those whom we harmed we try to rectify, those whom we transgress we try to ask Allah's forgiveness and that we take a daily accounting of ourselves to be better, to be better, to be better and to, to fix the wreckage of the past and lay a foundation for the way going forward. Subhana Rabbi Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Muhammadillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha